Okay, here we have our wound rotor machine. Up on the left, we have the wound rotor controller box. It's got the main contactor and the two bypass contactors inside it. On the top is the bypass resistors. This wound rotor motor is coupled up to a flywheel to give it a little bit of load for startup. Okay, let's have a look at the nameplate. Okay, here we have the nameplate for our wound rotor machine. It's a 1.5 horsepower, 1720 full load RPM, three phase, 60 hertz. Operates at a line voltage of 230 volts. Windings are on the stator are delta connected internally. We have a maximum line voltage of 4.7 amps. Our rotor volts, maximum rotor voltage, uh, is going to be 100 volts, and the maximum rotor current will be 6.8 amps. It's Compton Parkinson. Okay, guys. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at now is we have our wound rotor here, and we can see what the, um, the re generated rotor, board, rotor volts is going to be our reduced voltage right now. We're gonna we're gonna start our rotor our, our wound rotor motor up. I'm gonna leave the rotor lines open. We're gonna put a voltmeter across it and a uh, frequency meter across it. We're gonna have a look at uh, what the values we're gonna get. Okay, so this isn't a closed circuit, so we're gonna have no current going through the rotor circuit. So what do you think is gonna happen to the rotor? Well, let's have a look. Okay, hey guys. Uh, okay, so here's our meters all set up. We have an ammeter in series with our, our lines feeding our stator, so we can get our stator amps. We have our stator volts meter. We have this uh, voltmeter parallel to our lines for our stator volts. We have this ammeter in series with our rotor circuit in our rotor circuit, so we can monitor that for in the future. But this one particular, we're going to be looking at our rotor volts and our rotor frequency. Okay, should be labeled here. Um, now. Uh, we're going to start the motor up. The rotor circuit again is not connected, so I don't expect any um, revolution of the rotor yet. Okay, here we go. Okay, the main contactor supplying power to the stator is energized. We got 209 volts here. Okay, our rotor now, because there's no closed circuit, it's not rotating, so it's going to act as a transformer, where we have 90 volts across, uh, line voltage across our rotor, and our frequency is the same as the supply frequency, 59.98, 60 hertz. Okay? Great. Okay, hey guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to start this wound rotor motor like a squirrel cage motor, where we're going to start it with our secondary circuit here, our rotor circuit, is going to be shorted out. Okay, we're going to try and see what the current's going to be in the stator, current's going to be in the rotor. Now we still have our voltmeters uh, in the circuit as shown here. This voltmeter, as you can see, it's going to measure the potential difference across the jumper, so it's going to be zero. Our frequency meter, same thing, it's going to read zero, so it's not going to be too effective. Our voltmeter over at our uh, line side, supplying our stator here, it's going to see our, our line voltage, and then again, our two ammeters are going to give us our inrush current and then it's going to give us our running current when we get up to that uh, full speed. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, hi guys. Okay, we're set up to test out uh, that circuit we had on the board there before. Uh, we uh, had a little bit of a problem with the analog meters here. Uh, the range is not high enough for the currents we're going to be getting, so I put the clampons in place here. Again, this is going to be our stator current, that's going to be our rotor current, okay? And then again, our rotor volts and hertz. Now, these guys are basically, they're across the jumpered out um, uh, secondary circuit leads or uh, rotor leads, so they're going to be almost no voltage. Our stator volts is going to be the same. So, let's give it a try.
accelerated to full speed real quick. Okay, now it's at full speed. Our stator current's at 3.2. The FLA is 4.7. So that's a decent range. And look at our current going through our rotor circuit. It's down to half an amp. It's pretty good. That's kind of what we expect. Okay guys, now we had a look at with it shorted out, with it open. Now we're going to start a wound rotor here with all the resistance in the circuit and we're not going to engage the bypass contactors here. So imagine it like it would be at this situation. So we're going to run it and we're going to get some, we're going to let it try and get up to full speed. There's almost, there's not too much torque on it. So once it overcomes the flywheel we have here, that's a large flywheel on the end of the motor. Um, it's going to get up to not full speed, but it's going to get up to a, a decent speed. And we're going to see what the, as it accelerates up to that, we're going to see what the uh, rotor volts, uh, how it um, ch changes and the frequency, how that changes. Okay, now also, um, while we bypass, uh, sorry, while we run without them bypassed, we're going to, we're going to engage these contactors and then again we're going to see what our volts and our volt meters and our frequency meter are going to tell us at that time. Okay so and then we're going to close this first contactor then we're going to bypass all the resistance and we're going to see how the voltage in the rotor and the current uh, frequency in the rotor uh, changes. Okay guys, so here we are, our motor's all wired up, now we're going to give it a start. So we're not going to bypass any of the resistors. Um, we're going to have a look and pay attention to our stator amps and our rotor amps. Okay, when we had it shorted out, this guy went up to 32 or so amps, this one went up to 76. Let's see what happens when we have resistance in a rotor circuit, how those two uh, perform. And then again after, we're going to watch our rotor volts and our rotor frequency. Okay, here we go. So our stator amps went to about 10 amps. Rotor amps, it peaked at about 16 amps. Now have a look at our rotor volts and our frequency. They're both dropping right now as our motor gets up to Closer and closer to uh, synchronous speed, the frequency drops. Okay? Now let's have a look at our speed. We're not quite at full speed for this resistance yet, but that's pretty close. enough torque to start the motor but as it accelerates it gets up to approximately this is the maximum rpm we can get right now uh, with the existing resistance in the rotor circuit we can't produce enough torque right now to keep going faster okay so we're going to go to our second stage of our our lab here where we're going to take out our first set of resistors, okay, and our frequency and our volts are going to drop, okay, we drop down to 6 volts and 5 hertz. RPM. So it has increased a little bit. Okay, now let's bypass the remainder of our resistances. We're going to see these guys are going to drop 
Okay, our timing circuit's got a timeout. This is gonna drop down to zero hertz, two to zero hertz, and then to zero volts. Now, these meters are now being bypassed by the contractor, so it's measuring across that drum for again. Our RPM, now we have a high enough rotor current to supply enough torque to get our motor up to close to full, full speed now. Well, actually, this is faster than full load RPM because uh, we don't have full load on this motor right now. So 1774, 1775, the full load rated RPM for this wound rotor motor is 1720. So we haven't quite loaded it up yet, uh, enough. Okay, so to summarize, at the beginning, we had our rotor, rotor shorted out. So we had, uh, basically we started it with M1, 2, and 3 all tied together. We had our current meters in series with our stator and our rotor, and we noticed with our stator, we had, well, close to six times the FLA, and our rotor went up to uh, almost 10 times or nine times it's rated current, so we had 30 and a 60 amps. Then we do, we started the same uh, uh, motor uh, with full resistance in the circuit, and that's dropping our stator current down to 10, okay? A little more than double uh, the FLA, and our rotor current dropped down to 15, which is about a quarter of what it was before. Okay, so what we've learned is, when we are adding resistance into our rotor circuit, our overall rotor current will drop. Okay. One of the things about this wound rotor motor, we have the ability to have really, really high torque at the beginning of startup of the motor, and we can maintain pretty high torque provided we alter the staging of our resistances. Uh, what we're looking for here is uh, an, a value of resistance that's going to equal our inductive reactance. Okay, that's going to give us our maximum torque. To do that, our power factor angle is going to always have to be. 45% or 70.7, uh, sorry, 45 degrees or 70.7%, okay? Which is gonna give us our highest uh, impedance here. Now when we have our the higher the impedance here, the lower our current's gonna be. The lower our uh, rotor current's gonna be, the lower our stator current's gonna be, okay?